From haunted hotels to terrifying tales of haunted convents, there is a lot more to New Orleans than the amazing food and jazz music. You guessed it, I am back with part 2 of the top 10 terrifying places in New Orleans you should never visit. So let's not waste any more time. Starting off at number 10, Jackson Square. Located in the infamous French Quarter in New Orleans, Jackson Square is riddled with terrifying spirits wreaking vengeance. Historically, the square was used for public executions and it's believed that all who died there haunt the grounds looking for revenge on those who took their life. Those that walk through have felt like they're being followed or seen unexplainable lights and shadows in their photos and all leave feeling confused and scared that something was trying to get them. So if you are planning to visit, just be careful where you step foot because you might not be so lucky as those that have tried before. Next up at number 9, Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop. Despite its name, Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop is actually now a bar. And although it may look like a cute old building from the outside, it holds a few terrifying secrets that haunt the locals to this day. It's believed to be haunted by the infamous brothers Jean and Pierre Lafitte, a pirate duo who used the shop as a front for their smuggling operation quite successfully for many years. The brothers were eventually arrested for their operation and perhaps that explains why the spirits have never left. Now a bar for locals, the ghost of Lafitte has been seen by many haunting the pub along with a mysterious woman that appears suddenly in the mirror on the second floor. No one knows just who she is but those that have witnessed her apparitions were sent running in terror and have never returned. Coming in at number 8, Our Lady of Guadalupe Church. To date it is the oldest church in New Orleans so it's no surprise that it also is one of the most haunted places in the city. Back in the day, the building was used as a sort of pseudo morgue, where they would house bodies waiting to be transferred to the St. Louis Cemetery. Over the years, the church housed many victims of yellow fever and even a few people that had been killed, and it seems the souls stuck to the church despite being buried elsewhere. Those that enter feel immediately watched and have this terrible, eerie feeling that they can't seem to shake. While no one has seen apparitions yet, locals agree that there is no doubt it is haunted and many avoid it if they can. Next up at number 7, The Haunted Hotel. Very appropriately named, this hotel is the known site of at least 12 killings and the infamous Axeman of New Orleans is said to have lived at this very hotel during his notorious rampage of the city. Years later, a bloody axe was found at the hotel when undergoing renovations and it's now actually displayed in the lobby for all to see. Those that have dared to stay at the haunted hotel have witnessed terrifying apparitions and many have left in the middle of the night fearing that the spirit of the axe man had come back to hurt them. So stay if you dare, but beware as it could be your last night in this realm if you do. Next up at number 6, the Jemani Lounge. The site of a tragic fire in 1973, the Jemani Lounge is one of the newer haunted locations in New Orleans. The upstairs lounge at Jemani was a gay bar at the time when somebody intentionally committed arson, killing 32 of the patrons and brutally injuring hundreds more. The upstairs lounge never reopened, but to this day, the ghosts of the men who died there haunt the halls looking for answers and seeking revenge on whoever did this to them. Visitors of the Jemani bar say that they feel the presence of the tormented souls and often cite inexplicable icy chills, hearing voices when no one is around, and even the smell of burning flesh. So enter if you dare, but make it clear you come in peace as you never know what might happen if you make the wrong move. Coming in at number 5, the Hotel Monteleon. Built in 1886, the Hotel Monteleon was once a beloved place to rest your head for the night, but it's now a terrifying place full of spirits that shock all who enter. Sadly, many died from yellow fever at the hotel and the spirits continue to haunt the halls to this day. They can be heard running around the 13th floor and some guests have even 
witness the spirits asking to play hide and seek or reaching for their hands saying they're lost only to disappear as soon as they make eye contact. Another haunting entity is William Wilder, a guest who was killed while staying in the hotel, but there are countless other spirits walking the halls that have yet to be named. Over the years, paranormal investigators have visited, attempting to get the spirits on camera, but all they've captured are creepy encounters that make their spine tingle. Next up at number 4, the Beauregard Kai's House. Now a museum, this house was once home to Confederate General Pierre Beauregard, the Sicilian Mafia, and later beloved author Francis Kai's. Ghosts from the Civil War are believed to haunt the museum and many guests claim to have heard loud footsteps or even seen bloody soldiers missing limbs with their faces blown off wandering the grounds staring blankly into the distance. Legend says Paul Morphy, an acclaimed chess player during the 19th century, was born in this haunted house and it's believed he was driven mad while living there, becoming possessed by a demon and running down the street with an axe threatening to kill anyone who came near him. He was later found dead in that same house and is believed he haunts it among the soldiers and victims of the mafia to this day. Coming in at number 3, Muriel's Seance Lounge. Back in 1788, Pierre Jordan purchased the building now known as Muriel's Seance Lounge, only days before one of the worst fires to ever hit New Orleans. Determined to fix things, Jordan rebuilt the building and soon called it home. But sadly, Jordan had quite the gambling problem and risked his home on a steep bet while playing poker and sadly lost his home forever. As the legend goes, Jordan was so distraught about losing his home, he hung himself on the second floor so as not to have to live without it. Today the building is full of spirits, people have heard a strange woman's voice coming from the walls during seances and many say it is not unusual to witness objects flying across the room or see glasses shattering throughout the courtyard. Some believe the seances have allowed too many spirits to enter and fear that the spirits are becoming angrier and angrier as the years go by. So enter if you dare, just be careful you don't get possessed while contacting one of the many spirits that haunt the halls. Next up at number 2, Myrtle's Plantation. On top of being the site of many tortured slaves during the 18th and 19th century, the Plantation House, now a haunted bed and breakfast, is rumored to be built on top of an ancient burial ground. The most famous ghost that roams the ground is Claire, a slave of the family who poisoned the mother and daughters after having her ear cut off for listening to conversations through a keyhole in the door. Chloe was killed after poisoning the family and is believed to walk the grounds wearing a green turban and terrorizing guests. But she is not alone. At least 12 other ghosts are known to haunt the grounds to this day, including the family that owned the plantation and other souls of the tragic deaths on the property. Visitors have witnessed inexplicable handprints or faces suddenly appearing in mirrors and the apparition of a girl who will practice voodoo on sleeping guests. So unless you are looking to get possessed in your sleep, it might be best to look for another place to stay. And last up in our number one spot, the Ursuline Convent. Back in the 1700s, the convent was run by nuns and housed casket girls. Casket girls were young women who had come from France to marry colonists and got their name from the casket shaped boxes containing their belongings that they were holding when they arrived. After their arrival, strange things started happening and the girls started disappearing. Locals declared them to be vampires out to kill them. The third floor had been where they were residing and to protect the nuns and other citizens of the town, it was decided the doors would be sealed shut with nails blessed by the Pope and no one ever dared set foot on the floor again. That was until 1978, when two paranormal investigators wanted some answers to the legend and camped out in front of the convent. As the legend goes, the two dozed off during their investigation and the next morning, the doors that were previously nailed shut had wiggled loose and the investigators were found dead, torn open and drained of their blood. So if I were you, I would leave this off of the list of visiting spots. Well, there you have it guys. I'm Kennedy. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.